don't count. But if it stays yeah, that way, just blew, we just blew something. Oh, no, it does this. No, it's a bad oh, it's, it's, Okay. Yeah. That was the old building. <laughs> <laughs> Every other second when it was yeah. that old building, yeah, you would. Yeah. No, that was so kind of so awkward, you guys. Anyway, they said if there's no, that there will be, uh, there's going to be some funds available for different things. Yeah, I'm sure we're live right now. We're live right now. I'm putting in the bank cut the weapon thing now. And we're good. Listening to the health department. You have to coordinate with your health department. We're live right now. We're live, but whenever we get ready, we go. Okay, it's exactly 4 o'clock. Oh, we're going to have to Let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, you want to do the roll call? Miss Green. Ms. Ray? Here. Mrs. Johnson? Present. Mrs. Isles? Present. And Mrs. White? Present. Okay. Um, number one, approval of meeting minutes of the regular meeting held virtually on May the 20th. Do we have a motion? A motion. White. Uh, and second. Also. Miss Green? Yes. Miss Ray? Yes. Mrs. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Isles? Yes. And Mrs. White? Yes. Okay, number two, the financial report, approval of listing bills and the investment finance report. Uh, do we have any questions or do we have a motion? I said you late this afternoon and check yes. any detail. Which, yeah, sorry I for the late. Sorry for the late arrival. The interesting yeah. one was. Uh, Going to that thing for all the ten dollar thing, $10 yes, $10. and the twenty dollar oh things, yes. <laughs> but it gave you, it was a different layout than what was given to you initially because yeah. we had to wait for the IT site to um, reconfigure it for you. We have a motion. I'll motion. A second. Um, Green. Sure. What, would you have? Did you have a question? Did you have a question? Catherine? Not about that. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you said. Yes, I the second. Best. I second. Okay. 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 Miss Green? <laughs> yes. Miss Ray? My apologies. Yes. Mrs. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. White? Yes. And Mrs. Isles? Yes. Excuse me one moment. Yes. Uh, where are you getting your agenda? Is it on the website or email? It's just in the email? Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't know if you wanted to hold off here for a minute. Or whatever. Go yeah. right ahead. Go right ahead. Good time. This is part one. Okay. Got it. Okay. What do you need, part one? Two parts of the agenda. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Go right ahead. Approval uh, to authorize the treasurer to close the fiscal year 2020 and run the set ball program and to open fiscal year 2021. Move. Second. Green and white. And white. That's a rocket. <laughs> it's a rocket. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, FY20 and the amended certificate appropriations for the beginning of fiscal year 2021. We have a motion. I'll this. White. I'll second. Oh, go ahead. Okay, okay. Right. Rachel. I don't have that one. I don't either. Rachel, right? So then you're looking. Yeah, I don't have that one. I don't have that one on you're the looking That's on the new. Well, I just got to find that one. So, okay, wait. Let's clarify here. You guys keep saying A and B. And Go to the, the very last email you sent me. That's what I'm two. on. Okay, it's highlighted in yellow. Yes. And I clicked on the second one over the board agenda, June 24th. 
part one. See where it says board agenda update, board agenda June 24th. Okay, let me just go back because I'm not seeing that. Okay, I have, I with the email that, the last email that I just received. At 2.52 p.m. No. Yeah, I see. Yes. Nope, this is the wrong one. He sent one after that. Nope. Yes. Sorry. I was on the wrong one as well because mine had not updated. My uh, email had not updated yet. Yeah, see, that's what the problem is with mine. Not syncing. My email is We're not, not syncing. It's, yeah. Let's do a send receive and see if that'll pick it okay. up. Okay. Can you just in. do me a favor? And we'll, I think yeah. that's the only. She doesn't have the wrong Well, I'm not either. And so just. Mr. Carter, you have a lot of changes. Did you look? That was the one change that I had had on from the 250 was C. Yeah, and, and I got that. We needed to have on there that wasn't right. on the last. So we'll just there. thank you. Can you keep that there again? Yeah. And we'll just go ahead and All right. just I'm going to turn mine this way. I can't. No, there's no way I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> okay. So what it is, you guys, it's an amended certificate, and at the end of the year, you have to send these two documents to the county auditor. And then the certificate gives them the final appropriations of what you spent, what your expenditures were for the year, but it also lets them know because the budget commission meet uh, first part of July, and they say, okay, this is where Bateman Free Schools, all the schools, all the townships, all the villages, they have to send this certificate over, and it shows them all of our expenditures. And I sent that. So I was going to say that was on your email. Yeah, sent. late in the day, I kind of sent that, but so it gives them all of our expenditures. We did not um, spend more than we appropriated last year, so that's always one. The first thing you want to see is that you didn't ever spend what your appropriations were. And then going this forward, well, it's considered temporary. And then by the end of September, you have to have permanent appropriations. So you'll see another amended one. In September, when we have student activities, I don't know if you remember student activities, they come into play. They have new budgets. So that's what that's about, if, if that clarifies anything for you. But that's what it will require superintendent, uh, board president, and myself to sign this, saying that we certify these and board approval. Yeah, I saw that. So, um, Mrs. So, White uh, made the motion. Do we have a second? Then? Yes, second. So we have white and green this time. <laughs> when okay, I and then we have uh, Miss Green. Oh yes, I'm sorry. I was going to tell a story. And we have Miss Ray. <laughs> oh, I was yes. going to show your picture. And we have um, Mrs. Johnson. Yes. Green. I also want And then we have Mrs. Isles. Yes. And Mrs. White. Yes. Okay. Do we have any other? I'm. I'm still. So we have the yeah. treasurer's report next. Okay. That's that's that was not the highlight. That was the only thing that we had that we wanted. So you'll be okay. No, I mean I'm not even getting the, the agenda. I, I. That's what I'm saying. I want to be able to follow, and okay. I can't because I. I mean I got this up, but it's not the highlight well, copy. Uh. You know. Oh yeah. wait, here. Okay, so. So the only thing that you would have gotten was, would have been that C that was missing. So then we went to D. Now you're okay. Okay, so okay. this is you'll, the you'll correct one. Yeah, that was the only one okay. that we were missing was C. Okay. Uh, and that was something I had to make sure I had on the agenda, so I apologize. That's yes, okay. That's, and that's on me because I just happened to look well, at you too know, late. Not very, nobody heard you. We've <laughs> right. stuff. Okay, just so, I mean, I just don't want to keep going if I wasn't where I needed to be. So right. now that I am, I'm fine. Those things happen. So, um... We've been extremely busy, and that's why a little bit of delay and stuff, because we have a new system that we're trying to learn with this redesign, and that is our state software. All schools, I told you, are switching to this, so it kind of makes us move a little slower than we normally would. Um, we also got our federal grant numbers in. I'll just... I kind of gave you guys a schematic of what we've had in the past. We're down a little bit, but as soon as I did this, then I found out that we may get a little bit more money, so... Um, then when it all comes down into the fall, we may only be like ten thousand dollars short. So, but I wanted you to see what the grants pay for. <clears throat> when you hear people say Title One, Title Two, well, you know some of these people we pay their salaries if they're a Title teacher. You'll hear that. You'll hear that phrase, Title teacher. It's almost your Title Aids. Um, Sounds like there's uh, a title. For like sports activities and stuff like that, isn't there? Um, not, not sports activities, uh, maybe for um, gender equality or something like that. Some kind of your, your federal grants come down from the state. It's called consolidated. It's called CCIP. Your grants will come in that way. Yeah. So we have 
um, Title I, II, 4A, uh, IDB, and like the one covers a portion cost of um, your SRO. Another one covers, and that's the small one, like the 10,000. Right. Another one's like 6,000. That's called the Eisenhower Grant, Brown County ESC. They do a um, the purchase service for us as far as some trainings. But then your two big ones are your 572 and your 516, and those are the ones we have covering costs for our special ed kids. And, right, and that's what I was just trying to think of. Yeah. So what's the And those are considered federal grants, okay? Yeah. And then occasionally you'll get state grants, okay? You'll get like safety grants. You'll get other yeah. things that end up becoming more on the 400 levels. So this starts fives. The right. beginning of the fund starts fives, and your state grants are local, state, and they start in the 400s. But anyway, so I'm showing you from year to year to year how we're seeing a little reduction, but it's been happening and it has nothing to do with COVID. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's just happening. But when I first did it, I thought, man, I better, this is like $36,000. That's, that's a big cut. But then I found out later after I produced this that, oh, at least when it's all said and done, it may be just about 10%. So I'm just curious because you've got some notations of what it pays for on all of them except um, 4A. And 4A is nothing, but Title Two A portion can be moved to Title One. So, and we do so. That. What is the you know kind of the mark for Two A? No, for Four A. Four A is that the um, ten thousand dollars that you mm -hmm. see here last year? That is our SOR. Okay, it's for safety. Okay, and you can always go to ODE's website if you guys want to get to the back. You can always go to ODE's website and look each one of these codes up and see what they can provide. But I didn't hear what you said. Our SR, our school resource officer. Okay. It kind of goes to that. School safety. Okay. School safety. So now, you know, it doesn't cover that full cost, but that's what we end up using a portion of that grant to cover a third of it. So is that one of those things that can't be moved? I mean, I know you notated no. that 2A no. can be moved. 2, 1, and, that, a, and okay. 2. Those two can be not, not, one can't go to 2, but 2, two can go to 1. Okay. <laughs> and then... Um, Okay. The other one stands still, and they have the restrictions that they have to follow the guidelines. Okay. So our last five years, we're down about hundred thousand dollars. What? How is that going to affect our next five-year forecast? Are we looking? Well, at this isn't general fund. Right. Your five-year yeah, forecast is strictly general fund. These are federal grants, so they have nothing to do with your. And so, well, what do you think will happen over the? Next your potential risk is always there when you know you, you see names now. Who, who, what is this paying for? So if it's not there now, anymore. If then. it's not there, then you're relying on your general fund, which to pick up these But we've funds. always had federal grant. You know what I mean? Like I just think it's a, I just want you to always be informed of where we're at in history. That's the only reason why I did this. I want you to see the history of our grants. And we do depend on our federal grants. So what's the difference now versus 2017 where we were receiving all the extra funds? Um, just because I think the kids you were serving. So you have what's called a MOE that you need to kind of follow, and that is maintenance of effort, which means federal grants sometimes they couple, they'll give you, but they want to see that maintenance of effort. What have you done on your side? You know, how much money are you spending? So if you're serving a lot, then we're going to couple that with a lot. But if you start declining and serving a lot, then you start seeing the decline in what you get funded. So it's all based on the, on the needs of what you're you're so do you think the distribution of funds will, what we're serving now versus where we're serving then would be about the same? Yeah, I, I, we, I know we've gone down. And I know we're still yeah. Down. yeah. I mean, that's that's the only justification. And like I say, at the end of the year, you, we have to run a report which is called maintenance of effort. So when I close out, I end up having to go into this, and that ends up going up to ODE, and they look at that, and they start saying, okay, what, what did Fayetteville spend? And they run those codes because they know 1230s, 1240s, you know, there's certain codes that where we've provided our own monies to educate. Because not only is that paying them, but there's also a different code that's also paying for some staff. Okay? This is just what we pay with the grants. Is Paula Weir Holder coordinating with the staff? She's special ed coordinator. Well, but who's the Title I coordinator? Becky Vaughn and Angie Noble. They're but your Title she, I But they get the supplemental. Who gets the supplemental? Well, it's not supplemental. Paul is your supplemental because she's our okay. federal That's what I was coordinator. Okay. And you guys made the last. That's what I thought. On her. It, was, it wasn't down here. And, you know, she really she does a fabulous job. Like, there is, in and comparison also, to other people. the funding depend on, you know, the number of the title, but also they have to track and show 
what we did with, I mean, the title oh one coordinator track and making sure that they're yeah. making progress because if they're not making progress, then that affects your funding. Also. We could have a whole meeting and Paul would probably would be one sharing with you guys just to take you to CCIP, show you what the criteria is because it's a, we just got finished setting up the grant totals for next year. And it was a whole afternoon from Greg and Barlow was very instrumental. I've been a teacher for two years. I know. I'm all, you know, I'm you're a child teacher, guidelines. so you know the guidelines and the restrictions and things you have to follow. So. Okay. Thank you. And then um, I think that's it right now. Just extremely busy. I haven't slowed down at all with all that happening. And everybody says, oh, you get ready to relax. rest. I don't think they realize what happens in our office. No, it's just the beginning. It's our peak. So. And on to number four, the superintendent's legislative report. Okay, well, uh, we've, been, we've been pretty busy in regards to what, how is, we're going to have school next year. That's the big question that everybody has. You know, uh, I know I've met with the superintendent uh, in the county um, and discussing uh, uh, an action plan on reopening. Um, I know that. The governor has stated that they're going to come out with some guidelines um, that we start. As many of you heard, um, uh, the governor has kind of opened up uh, athletic extracurriculars. Um, they're going in phases. As of right now, they're in phase two. Before phase one was um, like a skills and drills where we can have smaller groups, varying if it's indoors or outdoors. Now they're in phase two to where they're able to uh, have uh, like inner squad scrimmages like that. So, and then also with the discussion from the governor yesterday, um, where it's uh, they're going to send the guidelines. They haven't come out with them yet. They have not come out with them yet. And they said they'd come out uh, within the last ten days. Um, but we had to make, we had to move on and uh, you know collaborate with the uh, area district superintendents and. Um, very similar to what Warren County yeah, Warren County has done is that they've kind of put out their um, like the, the county agreement, reopening agreement. It's very broad. But here's the one thing that we don't want to do is, you know, the ways we are competing for students, but we don't want to do something one way and then the neighboring district do something totally different. Because what I've really heard within our community is that, you know, as, as many of you know, um, there's a lot of talk in social media and the news where, you know, they're having this blended learning where you're going to school two days and you're online three days. Well, a lot of, a lot of our parents, they both work. You know, it was a struggle. You know, even with me being here, my wife and being a stay-at-home mother, you know, it was a struggle to, with the online learning, the remote learning, um, to where the point where they're saying, hey, you know what, if that's the case, that we're just going to go K-12 or some other online service to where they can stay home. They know their, their child's schedule, you know. So um, the one thing that ODA has requested for us to do is um, we had to file a school district blended learning declaration form to where um, if there is a spike in the COVID or the county health department shuts us down, to where this is, we, this is an option we can go with. Um, but ODE did state too that if we we don't do it, we don't do it. It's okay. But we would have to get this form complete. So I already got that complete um, for the 2021 school year. Because if you don't and something happens, you're now you, you will not get the credit for doing the remote learning. So we got that handled. Um, the one thing I did send to you guys too is uh, the Brown County Schools Common re Reopening Agreements. Yeah. And I know uh, Miss Green has some very very good question, valid questions in regards to transportation. What is the school day going to look like? Um, so it's really, it's, it's pretty broad as of right now, but all the districts are working together within our county, along with our um, county health department and our educational service center. So we're all on the same page to where if you guys look, if uh, we plan on going to school Monday through Friday, um, you know, and then we have an action plan that if, if something does happen, the county says, hey, you know what, we can only do two days or three days. So we do have somewhat of an action plan. However, if the guidelines do come out, um, we can always amend this. You know, the superintendents, they're all waiting. I was just 
um, by we have a group message. We're all waiting to see if what's going to happen, and then we're going to um, get back together and uh, decide on an action plan. Um, transportation is a big, big question mark as of right now. Um, well, right now we're saying we allow two students per seat. In some instances, three students and children are younger and therefore smaller. Um, as you know, as many of you guys have seen the school buses, um, three is, is, is stretching it out. However, um, you know, if it's the same family, the same household, the, you know, I, I can understand that. Um, now, the big question is for the mask uh, for staff and students. Uh, that was uh, a question that we all had. So what we all just came up with, very close to what's being done in Warren County, is that uh, the students, it's optional. However, our staff, bearing on, of course, if you're an elementary teacher, those kids, they're very clingy. They're, they're, they're physically trying to hug you because they haven't seen you all summer. You know, so we recommend if, if it's within the six feet, they would wear a mask. Now, if they plan to wear a mask the whole day, that is their choice. You know, so, um, and then for recess, um, there's, if you guys look here, there's a variety of different things that we're looking at recess. But our number one goal, our priority is, is to make sure when we go back into school um, that we have covered all areas of safety, um, sanitizing, uh, we're, we're looking at you know, some things that our district's looking at doing, even if it's not in here, is making sure that uh, we have uh, sanit you know, hand sanitizers in our classroom. Um, you know, making sure that we are, um, to the best of our ability, able to uh, spread out the, the seating for all students. You know, in our districts, for example, our, our group of sixth graders, they're at 74 students that's great but whenever you only have three classrooms and then you have electives within there you're looking at 25 students per class um that is going to be a challenge for us you know so um we're working on this i wish i could give you guys some more answers um but what i'll do is whenever especially when the governor comes out and uh, we get discuss this with the other superintendents in the county uh, we'll get with you however also what we're looking at doing is is that we'll do this here, but we're going to build a committee um, so it doesn't just look like, hey, you know what, the fable is just doing whatever they want to do. Um, we're going to build a committee to build support, you know, with our staff, but also uh, I'm going to be asking one or two of you to be part of that committee, but also the community members. Yes. Okay, that's you know, cool. so yeah. we want to make sure that we do have the support in all three areas. I have a couple of questions. Uh, I don't have to have answers. I just right now, but just a couple of things that I think we would be concerned, and one of them is that with all uh, programs and plans and all of that, you implement them for a couple of weeks, everybody's on board, and then, you know, things, people forget, they go back to their old routines and stuff. I would highly recommend that the monitoring and the reviewing of whatever it is we're doing and, and how it's being done and making sure that everybody's compliant and all of that would be very a huge important piece of this. Uh, because you know people are just human and you know we all get lax about things. The other thing um, I'm really concerned about and maybe it's silly of me to be concerned about, but um, um, are the uh, sports activities where the kids are going, you know, far and wide and other kids are coming here and, you know, there's, to me, it creates such a, an increased opportunity to um, spread the corona if it's, you know, if it's around somewhere. And I just, is that in the governor's phase three or four or whatever, they're going to go to full blown, um, you know, regular sporting activities among the districts and stuff. Uh, what, what they're, what we're looking, what, what's going on with the different phases is one is that it's for, for all districts, it's all voluntary. Um, there's, there's only just a handful of individuals on the football team there. 
they're in there, but it's all been voluntary. It's not mandatory at this point. I'm also, there's guidelines, just like when we come back into school, like temperature checks. Um, they check the temperature before they even enter the building. Um, they're only allowed to use specific restrooms. Um, they have to have their own water bottles. They cannot be drinking, you know, out to the fountain. Didn't they say though, that that's going to be on the parents to check the kids' temperatures before they leave? Well, see, that's the thing. Yeah. Yes, you're right. But we're making additional. We're doing more. You're going things. over. Correct. Yeah. yeah. But there was one good thing on the news, and I don't know. You know, I think that doctor, she, am I pronouncing yeah. it right? He had to testify before. Was it the Senate or the House? Yeah. And he he said they were close to a vaccine. Now I don't think he would say that if he. Didn't think they were making some right. progress. Right. I mean, that's tend to talk about what you know the temperature check and the spread of the disease. There's something else that I know everybody will think you know, is great. Something else you need to consider is what are we going to do if the child has a temperature? Do they stay home for ten days? You know, two weeks? Yes. Or are those going to be excused? What if a parent calls in and says? My child is running the temperature, they're not allowed to come in. I mean, you know, is it going to get out of hand? Yes, yeah, so we actually have a protocol. There's actually we have a protocol right here okay. when it comes to that yeah, return to school after illness. Um, you know, I'll just kind of read it out loud. If a student is diagnosed as having COVID 19, they must meet the following criteria to return to school. Um, you know, three days with no fever, without using fever reducing medication, and other symptoms improved, and 10 days since symptoms first appeared. Um, then also, you know, when we're in the classroom, there's going to be a track, what they call tracking. Just like if, let's say, someone did get the COVID, you know, they're going to look at where exactly they were seating, and then, and then they'll look at their, their schedule and see anybody that could have been exposed to it. Um, you know, so also along with those students, I only have a fever and no other symptoms. I've not had any contact with the individual that has COVID-19. They return to school after they are fever free for 24 hours without using any fever reducing medications. Any other illnesses should be handled in the routine manner according to district policy. Um, to return to school, the child must be transported to school by the parent and must be checked by the school nurse. So, so there, there's some stuff and there's there's a lot more here, but along with that, um, um, you know, whatever guidelines that the governor has put out, we're gonna try to go above and beyond with our means. Uh, you know, and that's what all the other superintendents, you know, within the county are going to look at doing. Um, to to take that one step further, because I went to that Zoom meeting with the board members, and they said, send it to us. Someone else that you may want to consider being on the committee is somebody from the union network, because you're going to have teachers that will be taking on board. They have a people who have to see how we need to about that, you know, how the sick days, what we need to do, is going to be on pay, you know, the requirement to stay home, which I think we should. Sure. Um, within, uh, within that committee, we were looking at having a couple of teachers per building as well. Probably. So, uh, yeah, so is it, uh, maybe, I, maybe you guys said this and I just missed it. So at this point, if a student is does have a fever, how are we? I mean, do we have any way of requiring them to, to be tested? We're looking at different avenues on that. Okay. So I'm not, because not, I think not some necessarily people, tested for the COVID 19, because I think that's kind of, you know, it's, there's only so much you can do with that. But with us, the temperatures, if they, they run a, they're running a fever on you, they're going home. Right. But what I'm saying is, if if a student if a student is does have fever and are symptomatic and they don't get tested then if they're not tested then you got to automatically assume that they have it mm -hmm. unless they are tested and they come back negative yeah. so you can't just say okay they're free for free, fever free three for days. 3 days because they could still have covid mm -hmm. unless they're tested and it says a negative test result, then they can come back after three days. Otherwise, you would think they'd have to go through the 14 days. Right? Yes. yes so, we, But we don't have any mandate that can require those students to be tested. 
Really? But you know what? You're not going to have a mandate to say they have to be vaccinated either. You know what I mean? Like right. That's what I'm saying. But I'm just saying, I'm just as saying, far as absences. How do you do? Do you go plan A, three days, plan B, yeah, two days, right. mandatory, um, right. uh, doctor's yeah. note. Doctor's right. right. You know, right. saying right. that the doctor's have gone on. I can remember teaching the sixth grade, and uh, it was Jim Brown, and parents fighting over not wanting their kids to get the shots that they had to have. Right. Mm -hmm. And then one one fifth grader got the shots and died. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we it was terrible right. for the I'm students sure. and the sure. teachers. And I, I think, think that would be part of his. Yes. I, be part I know of the one thing that we're working real close with the Brown County Health Department. Okay. And they're they're working with this step by step. Right. Giving us the updates. Yes. And even in here it talks about uh, uh, they'll be writing a letter for the school district to use. The letter will explain the five ways to consider close contact for the COVID nineteen. Gotcha. Um, and you know and, and, and also um, they have the right to say, hey, you know what, we there is several cases going on, we're gonna shut you down. Right. You know, and then if they do say that, then that's when we get to our Option B, okay. we go to a remote learning. Gotcha. You know, no, we, we discussed that last we night in our right. meeting. And I think Margie mm -hmm. helps us on that committee. Okay. And again, I think that they were saying that any questions at all, if you want to try to call or any question that may arise, call the health department and I right. may direct you to do, but that's that's what government the line is going to do is going to turn most of it over to the health. It kind of takes that away from us. Right. 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 Yes. Yeah. And that's kind of what I want to know. I want to know how we're not right. going to be. Right. Yeah. They said the governor the line is going to put right. it on the health department. Good. Okay. So mm -hmm. right. question is how it's going to be handled. Yeah. 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 That's correct. A lot so, of stuff. So along with that, um, you know, with, with the change with being out of school and trying to get back into it, there are our, our staff that they need additional professional development. And the one thing that all the districts have uh, agreed to, um, and I, I, I'm pretty confident that you guys will understand as well, is that our, our start date was August 19th. Um, we're looking at going August 24th, it'll be a Monday. That'll, that'll provide three additional professional development days for one. Um, was that we have to go to remote learning because we're going to go to the Google platform now. We're going to go to the Google Classroom. This past year, we end up because we didn't know where we were going to go, so we use we use Microsoft Teams and we use Google Classroom. But now, since we looked at the pros and cons, we decided that we're going to go with, with our committee that we had a curriculum committee. We decided to go with the Google Classroom. So we want to make sure that we're able to provide, and the ESC is working well with us. On yeah, providing that professional development. That's all we're all doing. That. Correct. Yes, we're all going to start because that's, that's we're, there's right. some of that stuff that we're going to have webinars. Um, we're going to do some of PD online. Um, and then also in our districts, there's, every district is going to be different. Our process is going to be different. We just want to make sure when the start of school comes out on August 24th that we have all the answers needed. And all staff members understand their their duties. Along with that, I know that you guys have had the I've uh, given you guys handbooks. Um, we're going to be putting together as soon as the governor comes out. We're going to put in a COVID nineteen handbook as well. That kind of answers your first question that you had. So the staff members and also students, parents, and the community understands um, our expectations. Very good. You know Very so. Um, that's kind of what we're going through there, and then along with your the extracurriculars, we're adding, we're at, we're we're making sure we're crossing our T's, dotting our I's. Um, you know, and so just, but, uh, but in our area, you know, I'm the secretary of our health consortium. In our last meeting, you know, every every county is different. Every area is different. You go up north, Cuyahoga, they have they're having some issues there. Um, well, with us, in our consortium, there was only two that was considered cases you know compared to other areas so I think we're in a pretty good spot we're very fortunate we're pretty blessed right now well, you know so that's yeah. our goal is to make sure that right. we do that's care. what I was concerned about yeah. is that we have a pretty good situation right now yes we and do I'm thinking you know exactly. we start interacting with so many other people from different areas holy cow you know that gets crazy well, here's an example people 
jump to conclusions. Our priest at the church sent out a letter that two people that belonged to our church had had, had and right away, different people, people in my own family, well, they got it there. No, they did not get it there. <laughs> the one boy got it in the hospital because he had to have brain surgery right, again. Right, yeah. Yeah. So. Very important to get complete information. Very good. Right. But just like you said, Kathy, things are opening up. They're not just sports. It's not just sports. Right. Right. People are going to the doctors again. So right. now exposure. Right. You know, I mean, no matter where we go, we all start to let go of that resist, right. you know, being right, right. fell down. And now that people are traveling more in a day, not just always school, but right. and, and I just want to remind everyone, everybody sitting here except me and Catherine in 1978, remember the big storm where you drive down the road, the National Guard came in. How old were you? I was even thought of. I was even thought of. I was 17 and I remember that. A lot of fun in that snow. Yeah, I I've was heard stories. on Saturdays. We went one Saturday and they tested the students. Those kids were so anxious to get back in school. They did better than they had done the whole fall. So mm -hmm. I think our students will be so anxious to get back. Mm -hmm. Sick or not, they're going to do their best. They're probably be delighted to have three I'm, a, I'm a positive mm -hmm. thing. That's That's the parents are going to okay. be delighted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the parents are happy. <laughs> uh, so, so overall, that's my, my report. We're, we're working on it, and when yeah. we when we get some more um, guidance, Thank uh, you. I'll get in touch with you guys. Thank you. Great deal. So, next is the Southern Hills update, and uh, last night uh, we have a new. Um, principal in Southern Hills, uh, Angela Gray, that was the guidance counselor. She took over when Mr. Burroughs um, was unable to really assume his duties and he's resigned and she's the new principal and they just hired a man then to be the guidance counselor there from Adams County and he'd been a high school principal and he's real um, excited to do he's got a background in counseling too so he's uh, excited to take over and um, also um, we just signed a 10-year agreement southern hills and uh, u.s grant career center have merged oh mm -hmm. for wow. adult for adult uh, oh for adult uh, not for the high school but not, for, not so much for the high school but for adults um, oh uh, if you'd like to look this over, um, that makes it seems like it makes a lot of sense that they can share a lot of resources and stay with a lot of them and actually accommodate. Would you like to <laughs> hand it to Paula? Okay, <laughs> that'll be fine. I can look at it another time. Uh, they've worked on this, they've worked on this for a year. Yeah, uh, our superintendent and um. The person, you know, we have the adult career center out here on 32. Um, like right now, with them with grant, they're offering CDL classes at a near fraction of what people have had to pay in the past. And there's a need for that. So that's. Uh, yeah, that sounds like they're they're uh, making sense. They're yeah. really working hard, and. Uh, yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm working in a, Okay. Often times very good. Any any questions? No. Nope. That's great. We do a great job. 
She will. She she gave every board member a thank you note for giving her this opportunity. And she was just so happy. And before she was kind of doing his job and her job, and it was uh, adding some gray hairs. <laughs> but she's just so enthusiastic about, about this job. And that's the first woman that they've had do that. So, okay, do we have any old business? Okay, um, executive session to consider the superintendent's evaluation, contract, employment, discipline, compensation of public employees, consider matters required to be kept confidential by federal law or regulations or state statutes. Do we have a motion? Move. I'll second. Green. Miles. Ms. Green? Yes. Ms. Ray? Yes. Mrs. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. White? Yes. Mrs. Isles? Yes. I'm looking at that. I'm looking at the Yeah, 441. Okay. 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 Okay.